Hey folks, this is Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. In this video, we are finally gonna figure out chains. We're gonna figure out what chain works with what? Is it a nine speed? Is it an 11 speed? What do you even do with a 12 speed? Do they all link up together? So in this video, stay tuned. We're gonna get this whole topic cleared up for you. All right, folks, once again, Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Like I promised, we are gonna figure out all about these chains and what size works with what and what fits with what. I don't know how this works, so I've got an expert over here. We're hanging out with my buddy, Jason. He's the owner of Sussex Bike Shop, and he knows this stuff. So I am going to stop talking because I will get you confused and pass it over to a guy <laughs> that won't. <laughs> Thanks, Gene. Hey, so chains, pretty crazy stuff, right? And we've heard a lot of things over the years, and yeah, they've changed dramatically, especially when we take it all the way back from the beginning of drives. One thing that hasn't changed is, you know, they talk about pitch. The pitch on a, bike, on a chain is the distance from one barrel to the next, right? And that's always been an eighth inch. Okay. Just a standard. Whether that's a single speed chain like this for BMX or geared, which has evolved over the years, um, that's always stayed the same. The part that changes the most is actually the outer and the inner widths, all right? And that's, that's really where a lot of uh, things have, have happened over the, over the years. Um, you know, a lot of people also ask this, you know, remember there was a time where single speed mountain bikes were like the craze, right? right exactly. and there was a lot of confusion like, well, why can't I use that nice red chain on my, on my bike and it doesn't fit the gears and stuff. I was kind well, of glad you brought in <laughs> this kind of chain because I actually thought it was different. So this is actually even going better than I thought. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, so with, with the chain of this sort, yeah, the eighth inch stays the same, but the width was different. All right. So in this width here, that's the difference is when you have that wider width on a, on a single speed chain, mm -hmm. works fine on, on the wider chain rings and such. Makes sense. But when you try to put something this big onto, or width wise, onto a BMX or a single speed, it's just not gonna happen. Not it's gonna not gonna happen. sit down on the teeth. So as much as this, this distance from barrel to barrel is the same, the width is dramatically different. The red is a, a BMX style. BMX single speed. And yep. these are more mountain bike -y yep. like. Okay, exactly. So what happened is, is where this is eighth inch and then the width was a half inch, this went to 330 seconds. Okay. Now the interesting part is 330 seconds chains really started in the sixth, seventh, and eighth, eight gears on a bike. And you notice we're at 7.1 millimeters in general width. That stayed the same for quite a while. I mean, then we're talking, this is Schwinn yeah, Varsity. That's a long time. <laughs> you know, yeah. This is, you name it. This, this goes back quite a ways. And right. even still current on most of your entry level bikes that have 21 or, or 24 speed componentry. Right. Um, where there was a big jump is at nine speed. So, what happened here is we went from the inside at 330 seconds mm -hmm. down to, ready? 11 and 1 28 thousandths of an inch. <laughs> yeah, I got that. So what is that? Yeah, right? <laughs> so what does that really equate to? Well, I actually have the micrometer set up to 0.2 millimeters. That's really the difference. Okay. That's the gap. Like a hair almost. It, it's I mean, exactly. Yeah, it, it's almost nothing. You folks can't really tell, but I mean, it, it's, 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 it's like almost yeah, nothing. You can't even hair. see the paper yeah. through it, right? It's pretty nuts. So this is kind of a big deal uh, because once we, once we hit this marker, things really got real as to paying attention to what you're using. Six, seven, eight, that was like a free-for-all. You could use a Shimano chain on a SRAM, and of course, not that they'd tell you that, but right. you could use a Shimano on a SRAM, a KMC, no big deal. Once we hit the nine speed, this is where you better stay brand specific. Okay. And this is when we start to talk about having systems, drivetrains that are system engineered. Everything's made to work in unison. One of the guys at Shimano had come in at one point and said, hey, think of it this way. The guy who makes the cassette and engineers a cassette is the, sits right next to the guy who makes the chain, mm -hmm. who sits next to the guy who makes the derailleur, and so on and so forth. So, and everything's got to jive. So with that being said, a key element to picking what chain, chain to have and to use on your drive is really matching the componentry by brand. It's, it's really important. Next up, we really, as we get into these chains, and you notice the widths change dramatically, mm -hmm. you know, based on what you see on the, on the chart here, we have to worry about, if you're in the woods and you have an issue, mm -hmm. 
Well, we should figure out whose chain we could help, you know, right. borrow and use. And it, what this parts is important, and pieces, exactly, because you know? right, you've all done this before. A link's broken, your chain's broken, and you're all like piecemealing. Like, okay, well, what speed do you got? What speed do you got? Can you help? What master yep. link's going to work? And it's it's just so it's confusing. It so can, it can get confusing, and, <laughs> yeah. and not for nothing, it can cost you some parts and pieces on your bike. Yeah, additional to, to the chain. <laughs> hand truck a bunch of chains in with my backpack to make this whole thing. It shouldn't be this hard, but I'm not doing it well. <laughs> So when we're out there riding, you know, keep lightness together. Okay. Um, in essence, if someone has 12 speed and you have 11 speed, mm -hmm. you can see by the numbers, you've got a shot. It's not yet, that far right? off. Yeah, That's exactly. True. If you're riding with someone that either has a 24 speed yeah. or nine speed, I don't know if I'd go digging up my two, three hundred dollar cassette with yeah. that wide of a chain. That's gonna right. hurt some pieces uh, and potentially also maybe rip the derailleur off. We don't want that to happen. Really? Oh yeah, because if this gets stuck on those teeth as it's coming around the pulleys, it's just gonna lock up yeah. and grind up. It's, so just, it's just too wide. It's, it's just too wide, okay. right, exactly. Again, look at the difference here. We're going from 7.1 millimeters yeah. all the way down to that 5.25. Um, hopefully, folks, you can. I'm, I'm gonna do the best I can. We've got a camera above and a camera in front. Uh, we'll take some pictures. I can maybe put them in right now. Like, if you're really looking at this, I'm glad Jason laid it out like this. I mean, until I broke the display. Um, they really look, so drastically different when they're laid out like this. And a lot of us don't have this layout to really compare. Yeah, you it don't, makes you, a lot of difference. Yeah, very few people get to see them side by yeah, side. It doesn't work that um, way, yeah. So here's the next important feature. Um, when you're out there riding, especially if you have some of the, the quick links and stuff, put them in a little bag label them. Mm. Yeah, it's smart. <laughs> There's not many pieces, many inscriptions on there that tell you which one's which, That's right? So we definitely want to make sure you label. And if you're riding with the friends, you can be the nice guy. Maybe grab, grab a few extras of other styles, mm -hmm. you know, of different gear ranges, 11, 12. I know, Gene, when you right. take groups out, yep. that's the thing, right? Mm -hmm. You're always ready to go. Yep. Um, so nice thing to have is some backups. Yeah. All right. So chains, in, in essence, look pretty much the same as far as their design, right? A little mm -hmm. narrow, we're finding out and all that. Did you know that some of them are actually asymmetrical and need to go on in a certain direction? Like, like almost like your tire, right? You, yeah. You, I mean, exactly. It really has to go on a certain way. Yeah. No, it does. I, I, I did not know so, that. They, I thought it can just go on any way. Yeah, I did not know that. So this is something that Shimano does. Thank you. Um, and let's make it even easier. Yeah. <laughs> so, so with Shimano, I'll use this one as an example. Some of these chains, you'll notice there's no writing on this side, right? And if I flip it over, oh, you start to see some writing, right? Hmm. So. A very basic rule of thumb, as I tell people, is when in doubt, advertise. Yeah. Ah, right? so the writing on the outside. <laughs> writing on go. the outside, right? There you it's go. pretty, pretty yeah. plain and simple. Yeah, no right. one's going to do all that writing to have you hide it, right? Good so, deal. so writing on the outside. And it's one of the things, too, is you'll also notice that the links themselves have different shapes. And it actually helps with strength and also the pickup of the chain as it goes up to the easier gears. Dude, I, I had so, no idea about that. Yeah, so this is a common thing. That one you thing, got me on. You know, when we, we, you know we, we encourage people, you know, they work on their own bikes, they're having a good time, they're cleaning, you know, cleaning's a good thing, <laughs> right? And they'll take the chain off and wash it and they don't pay attention to that. And then they get it back on, they're going, man, this thing is noisy, it's just rough, what's Little going on? And stuff, right, yeah. Chain's on backwards. I, I'm gonna be the first to say, you guys can pretend that you didn't, I never knew the chains were directional. Yeah, and not well, everyone. Not all of them, but, but, right. but I, I, well, okay, I never knew to even look. How's that? <laughs> yep. I didn't even know. Um, is that only Shimano? How much? Because now you got my attention here. Am I doing right. this wrong? So, <laughs> yeah, almost all, all Shimano, and it really started at about the 10 speed and working their way up. And has stayed that way. It stayed that way. So, anything yeah. Shimano yeah, watch that we your probably have right now is, is directional. Yeah. Wow. I yeah, never especially, and the easiest way to tell is one side will have print and the other side will not. Folks, did you know that? Put, put, put a comment down below if you knew that because I didn't know that. That's actually a new one to me. Um, if you knew that, like, when did you find out? <laughs> <laughs> when we get into these chains, of course, we're always pointing out that it, we're referring to the rear, right? Mm -hmm. To the rear cassette. And right. part of the reason for that is, you know, a lot of people are like, well, I, you know, I changed my chain ring to a wolf tooth or, you know, some aftermarket brand. Well, keep in mind, remember from nine speed and up, the inner width of that chain stayed the same. So it's going to run the chain ring the same. Where the issue comes okay. into play is in the cassette, you have in essence the same amount of space. Think of it like a pizza pie, you're just cutting it that many more times, right? So okay. the outer plate is where it gets really tight. Well, explain it to me one more time. I'm sorry, you sure. said, cause, so, so I go and buy a non-SRAM or Shimano front ring. Mm -hmm. Now this 12 so, speed looks a lot thinner right. than this one. How does the tooth from the cassette, the, pretty, the ring, 
Right, pretty crazy, right? But from 10 speed to 12 speed, right. the inside is exactly the same. That's all in plate width. Oh. It's pretty small, but it's, yeah. So when you look at this, it's, it's actually all about the outer plate width, which is then becomes the issue with, with a cassette because every gear is oh. a little closer. So that means those plates can't touch off on each gear. That's, that's something. Oh, oh my gosh, it just clicked. So that inside is it's, actually the, it's same. the it, same. It's it's the other part to make it fit inside the. Yeah. Okay. I didn't really. Okay. So what? Okay. Mind blown. Um, the inside where the actual tooth fits inside is actually you can't see this unless Jason lays this out for you. He's gonna have to come to everybody's house, <laughs> and you don't notice this until you see it like this. That little hole in there where the tooth goes in is actually the same. Yeah, and that's why people like Wolf Tooth and Absolute Black and stuff have their chain rings, and you'll see they're listed as 10, 11, 12 speed compatible. I I so. <sighs> I, I never knew that. I, I honestly yeah. thought, Jason, I, I, I swear, I thought the whole freaking chain was wider. Now it's plate. It's the plate. Inner state, uh, from, from here up, inner stays the same, outer changes. And then you can see in here, I'll try to get some pictures, that they start notching stuff out to oh, make yeah. the space so you can have it be thinner. Yeah, it's wow. crazy. So that also okay. brings up another oh, this really- this is so helpful, dude. Okay. Yeah, this also brings up a really important point as to when we're talking about compatibility, right, right, especially right, right. with links, mm -hmm. right? So as you can see, as they change in width, wow. well, that is outer plate width. So if you tried to use a 12 speed mm -hmm. on a nine speed, well, that piece of the of the plate wouldn't, you know, the pin wouldn't even come out of the right. chain, yeah, right? So that. that's look not gonna that. help you any. Yeah, okay. where when you do use the proper one, you'll notice how it comes out because like the little barrel is is right. Okay, yeah, I got it's it. inside. So you can see how that one actually yeah, now yeah, yeah. comes out that clean, right? Sense. Easy, easy to go. So there's a, you know, if you didn't label them and you're out there and you're kind of futzing around, you, you you're might be able get to just, you yeah. might be able to yeah. get an idea of well, this one's working. Well, at least know, between can... a nine and a twelve. I mean, yeah, like I said, exactly. the thing you can't even you don't even have a chance. Right. You can't even do right. It, right. Yeah. When you start doing like eleven, you know, even that yeah. it kicks out a little bit, but not enough not for it to lock in place. Just enough to tick you off. Why can't I get this to work? Exactly. So. You know, keep keep things integrated. Label your stuff, especially if you're a guy that has you know multiple bikes and you want to, you know, one's 11 speed, mm -hmm. one's 12 speed. You have extra parts floating around. You know, right. you, you grab the old chain to keep from one you blew apart, but you mm -hmm. kept it for links. Label it. It will save you in the wow. long run from confusion. I never knew that, dude. Okay. All right. So now, what is compatible with what? So how can we make our friends happy? So if you're riding with some friends and someone blows up a chain, try not to skip more than one okay okay in essence if you have a 11 speed and they have 12 okay you can make it happen in limp home um if you have nine and they have 12 no. yeah 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 you might end up buying them a cassette or a, or a okay. derailleur you yeah. don't want that you know so you just have to play along and and try not to go further than one away and, and again it's yeah. not going to be like oh that works perfect no this is so you can get home and then change it you know? right still <laughs> might be shifting a little weird yeah exactly and, because i know that the new shram 12 speed has a, like an arc you can see that it has a it's a different yeah like yeah master uh, and that's quick because remember when you get here you're also starting to see that 10 tooth cassette you know, oh, cog, little, right, right? So therefore, it's wrapping even tighter. Similar to what they found on BMX bikes, right? Wow. BMX bikes come with nine teeth. So that's in the back. why that's bent like that. Yeah, it actually makes it so it curves properly and contours and all. So I gotta uh, hang out here more. <laughs> all right. Well, let me ask. All right. So let, let's let's speak to this real quick. This is this is this is this is really cool. All right. We've got the Shimano yeah, master so, pin there. So, so what happens now? For anyone who's been doing this for a while, they remember those. Yeah. You ever drop one of those in the woods? Oh, yeah. It's still there. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of cursing, right? Yeah. So, yeah it's pretty, ter pretty terrible stuff. So in a pinch, they were really hard to work with. Right. Some of the chains will still come with this, but even, even Shimano has gotten to the point now where almost all of their chains okay come with quick links. Okay. I put that there just so as a, as a reference of yesteryear. Gotcha. And also just to, to know that, yeah, they can still work. But here's the trick to these is, you know, with these, you'll, you'll kind of see by shape, maybe you'll know which ones. Again, if you label them, you'll know which chain right. it will go with. This was always one of those, well, which one do I use? Yeah. Well, if it was 10 speed, it had two rings on it. And if it's 11 speed, it has three rings on it. That's how uh. you would know which which uh, dedicated pin you would use on what chain size. Very good to know. So, wow, that's, that's, but that's if, awesome. If I had my choice and vote, I'd throw that thing out and give myself a quick link. Yeah, I, 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 I would do the same yep. thing, I agree. Okay, uh, another one for you. Quick link from SRAM on a Shimano chain. Well, 
you really shouldn't do it. Okay. That's what they'll tell you. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, it can it, it can work. Yeah, exactly. But Again, you still stick with the same rules here. Don't go up and exactly. down. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, and try to keep it close and 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 don't mix too much you know right. again anything to get yourself out of the woods without right. having to walk right right and that, um, that, i'm going to actually kind of air quote that remember jason's trying to help us to understand this and get us out of the woods everything he does here is always the right one for the right bike yeah so there's this there's is, no play in when it's no time plan. to put new stuff on this is right this is getting you out of this the woods. is getting you out of the woods you could walk if you want or you could take his <laughs> advice and just get home and then fix it the right way later on right all right, we've covered a bunch of chains and what works with what, but now we've got, and you guys know I'm getting one, the world of e-bikes. Yeah. Does it make any difference if we have an e-bike? Because the reason why I'm asking is technically the cassette and everything's all the same nowadays. A lot of them are giving it. So does it make any difference? It is, but it turns everyone into a torque monster, right? So oh, that's a good point. we got a lot of pressure on that chain. There's a lot of action going on. Um, so especially in the front drive, the, the, what we call the mid motor mount uh, design, there's a lot of forward pressure and pulling on that chain. Um, so when you when you purchase a, a chain, you know here's one that's it's 11 speed, it's Durace, it's XTR level, but you better make sure it also has that e-bike icon, e -bike on icon. It. Okay, and that it. means that it can withstand that added torque that gets put okay. on by the e-bike. So it's kind sense. of a big deal, and yeah, you know. Have you ever had a chain break on you mm -hmm. under under pressure? Oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. what usually happens. Yeah. yeah, there's parts of your body that are just not happy when that happens. No, right? no, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, you're so, right, you're right. You yeah, can actually you, really hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah. you can. Yeah. So make sure that if you're riding an e-bike, do yourself a favor and get that e-bike rated chain. Cool. Last thing I wanted to talk about, besides thanking you, <laughs> is the actual multi-tool chain chain breaker. Do we need to know anything? I mean, we've covered so much stuff. We could just like put a bow on it if we just know, know you know, <laughs> sure. how did that work? Sure, so yeah, the multi-tool itself is a great thing to have, um, especially if it has a chain breaker on it, you know, because you will have to maybe break the chain apart, bypass a derailleur, right. make it a single speed and all that. No one wants to carry around this. I mean, that's, that's so just the chain tool. It, it, forget it, right? <laughs> that's, that's not worth it. So um, when you get a chain tool, Nowadays, remember, everything from nine speed up ends up with the same inner width, right? So right. this can break any chain apart. And now with the quick link, that makes it a whole lot easier to put them back together. Because you don't have to put that pin right, in. Right, because the okay. pin, you know, if you if you broke a chain right. apart and then you mushroom the end or something, uh, it might just break five pedal strokes later, Understood. right? So Understood. the quick link kind of saved us. So really at this point, any chain tool that's out there will work. Here's the difference though. Um, you kind of get what you pay for, okay. right? So when you buy a chain tool, if you want to use it once, hey, you can buy the one you won't even break five bucks on, right? There you go. Um, but you, you, yeah, if you're going to go out there and ride time and time again, and things happen, you get the better tool. It's worthwhile. Um, you're depending on it. I yeah, mean, exactly. you think about it. The only reason why you're using the chain tool is because you're stuck. Yeah. You're stuck. Yeah, how long does it take you to ride five miles? Right. How long would it take you to walk, walk five miles? I'm with you on that one. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> right? that makes sense. So grab yourself a good tool. So one of the things that also changes when you go through these chains and you're putting them together using the quick links, right. you put a nine speed together, it's pretty quick and easy, right? right? The smaller and tighter these chains have gotten with these links, it gets really difficult to snap into place. Having a tool like this around is awesome because not only will it pull the chain together when you're, when you're wanting to release the mm -hmm. chain to maybe clean it, right. but because these two separate, you can actually put it between the chain and, and cause it to okay. pull away from each other and engaging that gotcha. quick link. Right, so I mean, folks, it doesn't mean like, I would say if you're gonna work on your bike, this would be a good investment to have. Yeah, clean your chain, it, off right. the bike, stuff right. like that. Because for me, what I usually do when I'm stuck out there is I do the whole put the link up on top and you know, hold the tire, push the crank, and because he's right, once you start getting up here, you have to go and it'll yeah. snap. Yep. But you know, this would be a better way of doing it than my you know, kind of ghetto way. But when I'm in the woods, right in the I'm, woods, I'm you're not going to carry that. Not so much. <laughs> gotcha. Cool, cool, cool. All right, my friends, we covered a lot here. Um, I'll be honest, we actually covered a bunch of stuff that I, I, I thought I was going to come more to the table with knowledge than <laughs> I, I, I really didn't know a lot of this stuff. So I, as always, need to thank my buddy Jason. No problem. All right, and um, folks, leave some comments down below of what you've learned. I'm going to also have a link to Jason's website to his bike shop in the description. Awesome. Check it out, right? It's always good to take a look at this stuff. Yeah, no doubt. You can't see this, but he's got a really beautiful bike shop behind you right now covering uh, Trek, 
Santa Cruz, tons of gear. If you're in the uh, Sussex County area, yeah. right, Sussex County area, stop in. All the information for his shop will be down below. Awesome. Okay, hey folks, once again, Gene from Regular Guy Mountain Biking. Keep the party on the pedals. I really hope you learned something, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.